Dr. Gerard, thanks for joining us again on Health Connection. Our topic today is bronchiectasis, and we like to start Health Connection segments with definitions. What is bronchiectasis? Well, bronchiectasis is a condition that involves the bronchial tubes, which are the tubes that go into the lungs that carry the air into the lungs, in which the those tubes are distorted and inflamed so that instead of the bronchial tube having a nice smooth taper getting smaller and smaller as it gets farther out into the lungs it develops areas where there are sac-like dilatations we call them uh, and so the mucus that's normally produced in the lung and is normally carried out um, of the lung is kind of stuck there in these pools and these pools of mucus then are not cleared out normally and so they can get chronically infected and cause chronic inflammation and scarring of the bronchial tubes and that's what is bronchiectasis. How does it differ from other lung diseases that we've discussed on Health Connection like chronic bronchitis and, and pulmonary, pulmonary, pulmonary fibrosis and other lung diseases? The, um, well, pulmonary fibrosis is a scarring that actually involves the lung tissue itself, and bronchiectasis is scarring that's in the bronchial tubes. Okay. Now, that's similar in a way to chronic bronchitis or COPD, except that in those conditions, you don't have these dilated sac-like structures in the uh, bronchial tubes. You've got more problems with generalized uh, irritation and narrowing that causes problems with getting enough air flowing through. Here in bronchiectasis, the main problem is the, the thick mucus that causes chronic infection and makes the patient have a lot of chronic coughing. And that's the main symptom that they have is the chronic cough and recurrent infections. Bronchiectasis. Is it a progressive disease like COPD? Is it chronic? Can it be cured? Well, there's a, a wide range of variability in the severity and the progression of it. Um, it's kind of broken into a couple of different categories. Um, many cases of bronchiectasis are related to some type of genetic uh, disorder. Uh, the most well-known would be cystic fibrosis. And, and that's probably the worst kind of bronchiectasis and is the kind that develops very early uh, in, a, in a person's age and is relentless and progressive and mm -hmm. becomes very severe. Mm -hmm. um, other kinds of bronchiectasis can be the result of, of infections like severe pneumonia when you're young can later result in bronchiectasis developing or for instance having whooping cough when you're young often causes enough damage that later you can develop bronchiectasis. And some of those cases are much more mild and are not uh, particularly life-threatening. Uh, so there's a wide range in the severity of bronchiectasis. Okay. Why are women more prone to this disease than men? Well, we're not sure. Um, we think that it has something to do with the the genetics, as I mentioned, uh, there are several different kinds of genetic abnormalities that can cause bronchiectasis, one being cystic fibrosis. We've also learned in the last five or ten years that there's a very wide range of cystic fibrosis because there's many different kinds of genetic abnormalities on the gene that controls the cystic fibrosis um, membrane transporter is what we call it. And so um, we're discovering that some patients have cystic fibrosis and it doesn't show up until they're 50 or 60 years old because they have one of the more minor uh, modifications. Mm -hmm. And there's another kind of genetic disorder. The bronchial tubes normally have little hair-like structures in them called cilia, which beat and help transport the mucus normally up into the upper airway so you can cough it out. And there are some genetic disorders that cause abnormalities of those cilia so that they don't function properly. So there's different kinds of genetic diseases and 
So these women must have some kind of uh, modification in some of these genes that's more common in women than in men, and, and so uh, they are more commonly seen with bronchiectasis. Okay. You touched on this, but let's give it a little color and tighten it up. What are the symptoms of bronchiectasis? Yeah, the main symptom is chronic productive cough with uh, mucus and sputum and then uh, recurrent infections because of the chronic cough. Um, and when you say chronic, just give that some kind of a definition over how long a period when you start thinking you might have this disease. Um, well, many months. Okay. It, it does vary somewhat and, and some patients have the chronic cough every day all the time. Uh, and other people will have a relatively mild cough at times and then it becomes more severe when they uh, are having a flare-up. Mm -hmm. But it's something that goes on for months and months and months, usually years, okay. they have the symptoms. Um, sometimes they develop problems with shortness of breath. That's not so much of a problem as it is in COPD, uh, but it's mostly the chronic cough and then sometimes the recurrent infections. Very well. How do you get a definitive diagnosis of the disease? The, um, the chest x-ray can give you a clue, but it's not very, um, the changes can be subtle on chest x-ray. The best way to make a diagnosis nowadays is to do a CAT scan of the chest that shows the lungs in much better detail uh, and can show these uh, dilated, distorted uh, bronchial tubes. Mm -hmm. So the CAT scan has become the major way that we make the diagnosis. Possessed of the diagnosis, how do you treat it? Well, the, the main thing is to take measures that help the patients keep the mucus cleared out of their lungs. So they need to keep well hydrated so the mucus doesn't become dried out and thick. Uh, we do respiratory therapy with nebulizer treatments so they are inhaling medication, something that's become much more common uh, in the treatment these days is having them use a nebulizer with a high concentration of saline or salt water in it, which puts a lot of moisture into the mucus and helps them to clear the mucus out. Sometimes we use uh, bronchial dilator medications in their nebulizer, such as albuterol, the kinds of medicine we use in asthma and COPD to help open up the airways. And then uh, sometimes they benefit by doing chest percussion, um, which we used to do with a therapist kind of palp uh, beating on the chest uh, mm -hmm. when the patient's lying down to help loosen up the mucus. Now we have a couple of other devices. There's a, a plastic bulb that you can breathe through that has a vibrating device in it. It's called an acapella valve. It helps when they breathe through that to set up vibrations that get down into the lungs and help loo loosen the mucus. And then there is a percussion vest that can be worn that's attached to a machine that kind of shakes the body and helps loosen the, the um, mucus. So um, respiratory therapy to help keep the mucus cleared out is the main uh, stay of treatment. And then when they develop infections, uh, we treat the infections with the appropriate antibiotics. And then some patients take an antibiotic, a low dose of an antibiotic chronically uh, if they have trouble with recurrent infections. And then something that's um, commonly used in cystic fibrosis is actually a nebulized form of an antibiotic to, uh, to mm -hmm. take the antibiotic directly down into the lungs. So those are the different forms of treatment that we use. That all sounds like a whole lot of trouble. So can bronchiectasis be prevented from occurring in the first place? Um, <clears throat> well, it's important for uh, infants and children to be vaccinated against pertussis so that they don't develop whooping cough. And then um, anytime they develop a pneumonia, it's important that they get treated for the pneumonia. So um, 
treating infections. Another thing that I haven't mentioned actually, you can develop bronchiectasis from other kinds of chronic infections such as tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And of course, <clears throat> um, so treating tuberculosis early before it causes a lot of damage is important to prevent um, bronchiectasis from developing. There's not anything particular that you can do for the genetic uh, causes of bronchiectasis except to treat infections you know as early as possible. Very well. Doctor, it's very interesting. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.